Hey guys, in this video, we will go over the basic editing functions in MyPlasm CNC. MyPlasm CNC is the software we use to operate our CNC plasma machines. From the top left of the screen, click the third icon over Import File. This is where we import our drawings and where we have a variety of options to make adjustments to our drawings. When you click in the white space around your drawing, you'll deselect everything. When you hit Ctrl A on your keyboard, you will select everything. Keep in mind that whatever paths you have selected or highlighted is what you will be editing. You can remove a path by clicking on it and hitting delete. To undo that, hit Ctrl Z on your keyboard or click the undo button here. To make duplicates, highlight what you want to copy by hitting Ctrl A or by clicking and dragging a box around your drawing. Click the duplicate button here, and whatever you have highlighted will copy to the right. Now I want to copy these four upwards, so I will highlight them by clicking and dragging around them, like this. Now I can right-click the same duplicate button to copy them upwards. If you'll notice, when I duplicate these, they are very close to each other. If I want to change the default spacing of the duplicate button, I can do that by clicking the gear icon at the top right of the import file window. Click in this box where you see the arrows between the circles and type in whatever value you prefer in inches. Here, I set it to 0.25 inches and click OK. Now when I click the duplicate button, it will have a 0.25 inch spacing between each component. The Disable button is a little bit different than Delete. Let's say you have a nest of several components, but instead of deleting some of them from your file, you can temporarily disable them instead. This will make it so that the Plasma table won't cut out whatever you have disabled without having to delete them from your nest. In this example, the Plasma cutter would cut out the bottom eight only. You can adjust where the lead-in starts by right-clicking on each path. This can be useful if a lead-in is interfering with another component and you'd like to move it out of the way. If you happen to lose your drawing in this window, you can double-click in the white space here to recenter everything. If you'll notice, I have this dotted red line here. This is a visual representation of how much space I have to work with. This is added, removed, or adjusted up here at the gear icon. At the very top of this window, where it says, Show Area X and Y, the values I have are 48 and 36. This is in inches, so the dotted red line is showing me a 4 foot by 3 foot area in which I can create my nest. Again, I can double click in this white space, bringing us back to our drawing. Click this button if you want to arrange the order of the cuts yourself. The order of the cuts are designated by the numbers next to the lead ends. The default cut order for this component is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I wanted to make the top path that looks like home plate, the first cut, and the one below it, the second cut, I can click the sequence button and choose the order I prefer by clicking each path in the order I want. Now, when I click the green check mark, I can cycle through the paths and see the cut order I created. This button here is for scaling. As you can see, the dimensions of this component is a 3.937 inch square. Let's change this to a 5 by 5 square. To do that, just click the value under the X or the Y, type in 5, and click OK. Now we have a 5 by 5 square. If you want to change only one axis at a time, you do the same thing, except you right-click the value you want to change instead of left-click. I'll type in 3 for the Y value, click OK, and now we have a 3 by 5 rectangle. Click the left rotate button to rotate your drawing 90 degrees counterclockwise. Click the next button over to rotate clockwise. When you right-click these same buttons, you will rotate your drawing by 3 degrees instead of 90. Click the mirror buttons to flip the drawing left and right, and up and down. Down here we have offset. What is offset? Let's visualize it this way. If you want to cut a 2x4 at a length of 3 feet, 
you would measure out three feet with your tape measure and mark a line. If you were to bring your blade down right on top of your line, you would lose about a sixteenth of an inch because of the thickness of the blade. So you need to offset the blade just on the outside of that line in order for your 2x4 to have the exact length of 3 feet. The same principle applies here because there is an inherent thickness or kerf of the plasma. So instead of having the plasma cut directly on top of your line, it should be offset slightly in order to keep the exact dimensions of your original drawing. So let's say we're using a fine cut consumable to cut 12 gauge steel. We would select this tool option here. The kerf is the thickness of the plasma with the specific tool we're using. In this case, the kerf is 0 0.032 inches. The offset here should match the kerf value in the tool that you selected. You can change the offset by clicking and dragging the slider here. As you can see here when I zoom in, I can move the plasma away from the path by changing the offset, which allows our drawing to be cut appropriately at the correct measurement. You can also click here to type in the exact value for your offset. When you turn off the offset, you will then be cutting directly on top of your line. So I'll turn the offset back on. If you double click where it says in, you can change whether your lead ends are straight or curved into the path. When cutting much thicker material, it may help to add a lead out. This is because the plasma can sometimes lag behind the torch slightly, and if you have a lead out, you can overlap where the cut started to make sure the cut is completed. Down here we have sequence. To illustrate this, I'll quickly create a nest of parts. So I'll highlight this part and click Duplicate. So if I click the top left, then the green check mark, I can cycle through the cut sequence and see that it will start at the top left. If I go back and click the bottom right, then the green check mark, I can cycle through the paths again and see that it will start at the bottom right of the project. Alright, I think that's it for now. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about anything, please leave a comment under this video or give us a call. Cheers!